We're gonna see if I can do a quick freezing rain tutorial on this 2018 SQ5. We're gonna air it out on OBD 11 today. Look at that wheel gap. Just stick a freaking fist in it. We're gonna fix that by airing it out. In a later video, I'll install some lowering links. Okay, we're back in the car. Uh, I got some dongles hanging here. This is my mongoose cable. I am EPL tuned to stage one. But today we are talking about this guy here, OBD11. So for those who don't know and don't have scan tools or haven't messed with scan tools, there are a few Audi scan tools out there that have a plethora of options for you to go in and change some of the programming to allow for extended functionality of some of the sensors and what they can do and their abilities. Um, there is a running list. It's probably on one of the forums. I don't have one ready readily with me. At the same time, all of the coding that is in there does not work for every model. If it's a B9, which this is a B9 SQ5, you'll probably want to look at uh, one of the forums and see who has VACOM or VCDS coding for B9, S4, and S5. Um, you can try some of the long coding, but it does not all translate over to the SQ5. So um, it's more like a trial and error, but please use caution because not every vehicle is the same. So there's always that one little part people always mention when doing uh, coding on a car, you are entering and changing parameters at your own risk. Will it damage your car? No one can say yes indefinitely, but there's a possibility because every car is different. So please do use caution when uh, doing coding and making sure that you are inputting the right bits or the bytes on the end of your bit. OB11, this is the first version of OBD11. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in now. So with the OBD11, since I have the first generation, it is Android. So for that reason, I purchased a Amazon Fire Tablet. So my Amazon Fire Tablet has all the good stuff on there, which I do like. Um, the only thing about this is I have to get the Android tablet on Wi-Fi. All right, now that it is connected, here we go. It is actually, where do we wanna do here? We're gonna do the lowering out. So as you see here, I have a menu on the right, left side, scan on the right. We're gonna go down to control units. Now again, if you're familiar with VCDS or VACOM, um, a lot of these control units will be the same. I can't can't say or not if they are the same numbers as far as module numbers on there. I do have a VCDS, but I do have a hex can and that is a outdated interface. So I don't use it because I'm not able to access everything. And this OBD 11 I have is a OBD 11 Pro, which does allow me to access uh, more modules and parameters that I can change uh, within the ECM. So once we are in control units, because we are looking for the air out option, we want to go to level control. Uh, let's see, the chassis, so it's chassis control within OBD11. Click on chassis control. Wait for that to load. A lot of people have been asking me about this, so we will make sure Hopefully all answers, questions are answered. Okay, it keeps doing that. Still loading data after we have selected control unit within OBD 11. Still loading data, it does get a little slow sometimes. All right, so now we are in the chassis control which is how we will access the modules that control the air suspension. 
And there are a lot of different things that you can do within here. There's long coding, there's adaptation, and there is basic settings. Um, I wish I would have made a video a long time ago. Um, a lot of people who want to air out, they go and purchase the uh, CT module. Um, and it is a beautiful module. When I had my previous S6, I did, which is actually on my page. And the only ad, I only actually video on my page is from me selling it. Once I sold it, I did have the uh, CT module on there. Um, prior to the CT module, I had OBD11 and VCDS, and both gave me the ability to air out. I didn't know I could air out, but I played with it one day and was able to figure it out. And I was like, this is awesome. I just didn't like the time it took if I was going somewhere. Um, VCDS was easier because I would just need my laptop. However, I need to make sure my laptop was charged. If I took my tablet, I had to make sure number one, my tablet was charged, and two, I had Wi-Fi connectivity. Both things did not bode well with me because I didn't want to carry all these things around with me at all times in the car. So the CT module was the best fit. Obviously, OBD11 already being purchased, that's a 150 cost. VCDS purchased years ago was a $350 cost. So at the time I thought about it, spending $1,300 on a CT module wasn't the best option for me, but I saved and I bought it when the time was right. And I mean, I saved myself two minutes, basically. That's it. And I don't have to carry the stuff in and out. But uh, anyway, enough talking. What we wanna do once we're in control, chassis control, we wanna go into basic settings. Now I see basic settings, you have all these different things here. Activate level control, deactivate level control, pressure reservoir, uh, evacuating air, front air shock absorbers for front axle. Now vent is what we wanna do. Venting is going to take all the air out of the front suspension. So we'll do this, it goes by axles, front and rear. Um, this is a little bit different than my S6 because my S6 allowed me to do corners. I could do front right, front left, rear right, rear left. This um, does not give you the ability. It is by front axle and rear axle. So we'll press that. And in OBD, you have to hit this check mark and hold till it accepts. Basic setting started, it accepted it. And you see that button there? It says stop. We don't want to press that because it is actively doing its thing. I can hear it now, hear the motors running, and we will get an error for suspension being too low. There we go. It does say suspension fault because it is going too low, which in most cases will leave the vehicle undrivable. I have heard someone say you can drive uh, the SQ5 once aired out. Uh, my S6 was not on stock wheels, so when I lowered it, it wasn't going anywhere because the rear fender was basically, it was tucked pretty nice. So you see it's still red. Once that little icon in the corner goes green, you should know that the action has stopped and the parameter that you selected should be applied and done. You can exit out, there it goes, check. You can exit out and move on to the next. Now we wanna to go to vent rear shock absorber. Okay, selected rear axle, we'll press this. Basic setting is started and we'll wait for the check mark here. And the rear will also give us an error. The error for the front was more of a critical error. It was in red. The rear will be more of a warning. That should be a orange notification. Now for all videos, I know people might wonder what that check engine light is for. I have a catless downpipe. I did install it myself. I did not make a video, so my apologies. I will try to get some content out there. There is not many SQ5 content as far as installations on the B9 SQ5. Um, at the time, my phone was broken and I had no video camera. Um, but I will try to bring more content to you guys so us SQ5s can grow and have a lot more users 
be able to do things at home without having to always take your car to a shop. Um, so, and it is done. It looks like it is done. However, I don't have a rear indication. I never got the uh, warning for the rear. So we're gonna pop out real quick here in the freezing rain and we're gonna check this. Oh, it did do it. It didn't give me the air for the rear being too low. However, she did air out. Look how pretty that is. It's pretty low. So this is what a B9 SQ5 looks like fully aired out using the OBD-11. Uh, I strongly urge those who have OBD-11 or a VACOM BCDS to go ahead and use that. It's a nice option if you wanna just air out during a show, but you don't wanna be super low driving around. And you know, if you already have those two hardware items to plug in, it's an easy air out, right? You don't need a $1,300 module to do this for you. Unless you want the ease of, you know, access to using it via Bluetooth. Obviously, you can change ride heights on the go. But, you know, I don't need all that. This is my daily. This is not my show car. So, if I had a show car, yeah, CT module would definitely be what I would do because it's easier to be show mode and then drive away. But for a daily, I don't need all that. Um, this would look a lot sexier if I had wheels on it. But... At least we all get to see how this looks. They're probably like, who's this crazy guy in freezing rain <laughs> with this camera going around his car? So there we go. We have actually fully aired out a B9 SQ5 using OBD-11. And the process to reverse it would be exactly the same. We'd go back into basic settings. Um, when we open basic settings, get out of that page. When we get back in the basic settings, obviously vent is what got us low fill is what will get us back to stock. Uh, as far as I'm concerned for what I do with this, I've never seen a difference in the mode. As you can see, it's always in dynamic. I only drive it in dynamic. The B9 SQ5 transmission is sluggish. That's being nice uh, compared to other vehicles I've been in. So having it in sport mode, always um, even though it's a much harsher, harsher ride, I'm okay with it. I love the responsiveness of the transmission in sport mode. Drive mode is just doggish, even with, uh, even with a tune. So whether I'm in dynamic mode, whether I'm in comfort mode, individual, I haven't seen a height difference as far as being aired out. So, um, that is something that could be played with as well if you want to do that, but this is just a short tutorial to show you how to lower and raise the vehicle with OBD-11. I also definitely urge you when you're doing this, keep your doors closed, windows open, or windows up, and wait until the operations are complete before trying to move the vehicle, make sure everything looks good. Uh, when in doubt, if you don't like something, I would try to revert back or you know, fill it back up I will say I've had a process not complete. It told me it was low and it wasn't, or it told me it raised and it didn't. Uh, I just went back into that particular module, what was the front. So the front said it wasn't, uh, the front said it raised. I got out of the car and, did, and said it, and it wasn't raised at all, right? So always check the work you're doing. Uh, when it wasn't, when I saw that it wasn't raised, even though it said it did, I re-ran the operation, it raised. Uh, once it raised, I changed some of the drive modes, drove around the parking lot, put it back in dynamic, rode off. I've never had any issues. So um, hopefully you did like this tutorial. Hopefully you got something out of it. 
Um, the only other vehicle I know of that I've done this to, again, like I said, was my C7 S6. Um, I did it with OBD11. I did it with VACOM. Uh, the newer B9s, uh, you can still, B9, you can still do it with uh, OBD11. Obviously, you can get the CT module. And if you have a VCDS, you need the newer interface because the hex can interface does not allow you into the control module to do suspension work. You have to get the, uh, forgot the actual naming, but it's the new Wi-Fi module. And it's like 400 bucks. So to me, it wasn't worth it because I've had this OB11 for three years and it's a pro and allows me to do everything. So it works just fine. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope I can make some more to show you guys uh, some more exciting stuff. Uh, next video, I believe will probably be some inlets, intake inlets I have coming. So. Hopefully they all can come and I can do a comparison of all three. So stay tuned.